With the recent success of the Black Panther film, everybody wants to know more about T'Challa, Wakanda, and what the sequel might be like. While there's a ton of speculation floating around, a lot of fans have been returning to Black Panther in the comics and revisiting his old foes to fuel their need for more. Some of the villains on this list are pretty nefarious foes for the King of Wakanda. Others, well, they've fallen off the radar in recent years, but have an interesting history nonetheless. So today we're going to take a closer look at these antagonists, big and small, and primarily from the perspective of the comics, with our list of the top 10 Black Panther villains. And at number 10, Namor. Starting off this list is one of T'Challa's biggest rivals. Namor, the king of Atlantis. These two have many reasons to be at each other's throats, and it's bigger than just them disliking one another on a personal level. During Avengers vs X-Men, Namor was possessed by Phoenix, and leading an Atlantean charge, flooded Wakanda's capital city, which killed a lot of people. Wakanda then captured Atlantean generals and put them on trial for war crimes. Then Namor and the Atlanteans responded by killing the Wakanda ambassador to the UN, and 60 other Wakandan troops infiltrating Atlantis, claiming they had help from Wakanda's willing to betray their country to see T'Challa's sister. Queen Shuri fall from power. T'Challa and Namor met to discuss peace, but Namor shows no regret for his actions, and Shuri doesn't trust him either, so the nations go to war. Up next in 9, Moses Magnum. Initially a villain of Spider Man's and the Punisher, Moses Magnum is an arms dealer and terrorist. He was rescued by Apocalypse and given superhuman powers. He can release seismic energy through his fingertips. Overall, Magnum isn't a huge villain on Black Panther's to do list, but the character has continued to be a threat to the nation of Wakanda. After his army took over Canaan, a small country in Africa, Moses sent his minion Freak to steal military secrets from Wakanda, which failed. Later he would send Killjoy to Wakanda to try to assassinate T'Challa and throw Wakanda into chaos. Also failed. Tough luck. In at number 8, King Cadaver. King Cadaver is one hideous mother First off, he's an agent of Killmongers. Second, it's easy to see why he wasn't all that popular. Warped by energies from the Resurrection Altar, King Cadaver used to be a regular Wakandan, who had joined the insurrection against T'Challa. On the plus side, he now has psychic powers because of his mutation. He once tried to trick T'Challa by leading him into a trap set beneath a graveyard, using bright lights and mirrors to temporarily distract him. But that didn't last too long, and T'Challa gave him a serious beating. Cadaver is presumably killed in the final assault on Wakandan forces when a Brachiosaurus crushes him. What a way to go. Up next at 7, Malice. There have been multiple versions of Malice over the years at Marvel. The first was a mutated ally of Eric Killmonger's when he tried to invade and take the Wakandan throne. She fought alongside Venom, Lord Carnage, and Baron Macabre, all smaller villains that didn't make too much of a splash outside of their story arcs with Killmonger. The second Malice was more notable. Named Nakia, she first appeared in 1998 in Black Panther Volume 3, Issue 1, and was picked by the elders of her tribe to be part of the Dora Milaje, all when she was just a teenager. Now in the comics, the Dora are traditionally the the king's bodyguards and wives in training. A little weird. Although T'Challa informed her in the comics that her role was purely ceremonial. She became obsessed with him though, to the point where she tried to kill his ex-girlfriend and then she was banished. Killmonger eventually came along and used the altar of resurrection on her after saving her from being tortured, which then gave her new powers. He named her Malice after his previous Malice, and she would go on to fight T'Challa and typically his female allies, even killing one of them, Nikki Adams. And at 6, Akabe. First appearing in 1999 in Black Panther Volume 3, Issue 3, Akabe has been called the Joker to Panther's Batman. While his origin story is considered to be vague, the gist of it was that he was a Gadazian farmer who helped rebels from the neighboring country cross the border into his land. The soldiers repaid him in the worst way, by seducing his wife, destroying his farm, stabbing him 32 times, and leaving him for dead. He then allegedly made a deal with Mephisto and went around killing everybody who had ever interacted with his wife, killing them by stabbing them 32 times. He then returns to his home country to instigate an ethnic war. And when T'Challa sets up a refugee camp on the outskirts of Wakanda to help, Akabi infiltrated it, and stirred the drama pot between the refugees and the Wakandans, his sights now set on causing chaos for the king. It does go much further than there, with Akabi even almost getting crowned king of Wakanda and killing Black Panther. Definitely a villain to look out for. And at 5, Baron Zemo. In the comics, two men have taken up the alias of Baron Zemo. The first, Heinrich, was one of the top scientists in the Nazi party who fought against Captain America and the Howling commandos in World War II. Years later, after the Avengers resurrected Cap, he came out of hiding, and the two continued to be adversaries until he was killed. 
His son, Helmut, took over the Baron Zemo title. This is where Black Panther comes in, but in the MCU as opposed to the comics. Zemo's family was killed in the Battle of Sokovia, so he decided to take revenge on them by causing a rift from within the ranks. The Avengers ranks, that is. Oh, and spoiler alert, by the way. Zemo framed the Winter Soldier for T'Challa's father's death. This led to Captain America defending Bucky, which Iron Man didn't dig, and eventually led to the events of Civil War. So naturally, that made T'Challa an enemy of Zemo's, although he refuses to let the vengeance consume him and prevent Zemo from committing suicide when the truth comes out. Up next at 4, Manape. Manape is a Wakandan named Mabaku, who in the comics is a foil to Black Panther. His Manape identity uses brute animalistic force to achieve his goals and target his enemies. First appearing in Avengers issue 62 volume 1, he is one of the greatest Wakandan warriors, second to only Black Panther. But the character was a bit of a villain. He plotted to usurp the throne and turn Wakanda back into a primal state. Which seems absurd, but to be fair, he is a man who got his powers from killing a white gorilla, bathing in its blood, and then eating its flesh. Fun. The character makes an appearance in the Black Panther film as a friend rather than foe, but who knows what the MCU has planned for him in upcoming sequels. In at 3, White Wolf. The White Wolf, aka Hunter, was adopted by the previous king of Wakanda, T'Chaka, when his family's plane crashed into the nation and he became an orphan. Having to deal with some serious xenophobic behavior from other Wakandans for being white and a foreigner, he still persisted, all to rise in the ranks and become appointed the leader of the Wakanda secret police. He strived to be the best Wakandan he could be, especially after the birth of T'Challa, who he was incredibly jealous of. After T'Chaka was assassinated, T'Challa disbanded the secret police, seeing them to be too brutal, which resulted in conflict between the two stepbrothers as to what was best for Wakanda. Now, those of you who stuck around to the end of the credits for Black Panther would have seen the scene with Bucky Barnes and the White Wolf reference, which is why many think that this character may be reappropriated to fit into Bucky instead of the White Wolf being a standalone character. Up next, number two, Claw. Created by Stanley and Jack Kirby, Claw is perhaps the Black Panther's most nefarious villain. He is also the first villain T'Challa faced. Claw was the one who murdered his father in the comics. So let's backtrack a second here. Ulysses Claw is the son of a Nazi war criminal, and was sent to Wakanda by Hitler himself to learn the nation's secrets. After the war, he moved to Belgium and changed his name to Claw, and became a physicist who worked in the field of applied sonics, where he invents a sound transducer which converts sound waves into physical mass. But in order to really make it work, he needs vibranium. And guess where there's large deposits of that. Claw starts to formulate a plan to steal vibranium from Wakanda, but in the process he's confronted by T'Chaka, who he murders. T'Challa sees Claw murder his father, and attacks him, but Claw gets away minus his right hand. Now the character has been adjusted a bit to fit into the MCU, along with his story, but no spoilers here. And finally in at number 1, Eric Killmonger. Likely the most well known Black Panther villain, before and since the film's release, Eric Killmonger is a complex character that, similar to some other Marvel villains, is dangerous because of his motives. They have a point. It's not difficult to sympathize with Killmonger, and perhaps that's what makes him so likable. The son of an exiled Wakanda villain, Eric's family was forced to move to Harlem, New York, where he grew up having a very different experience as a young black man compared to those who grew up inside of Wakanda. One of the most prominent features of his character's adaptation in the film is the contrast between Wakanda, a superpower state that promotes pan-Africanism, versus the world in which Killmonger comes from, and the fact that Wakanda has done nothing to help the millions of Africans and those of African descent fight back systematic oppression. While in the comics Killmonger is very much so driven by vengeance, the film further explores the character, making his goal to be more than just liberating the Wakanda state, but to dissolve it to further liberate the rest of the world. It's a battle of two completely different philosophies. And plus, let's not forget that Killmonger physically is one hell of a match for T'Challa, so, and that alone is actually pretty Pretty important. All right, there we have it, friends. Which of these villains would you want to see in the next Black Panther film? Let us know your thoughts in those comments below. As always, if you dug this video, please hit that like button, share it with a friend, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We also have a ton of other great nerdy videos for you to check out in our playlist that's currently flashing on your screen right now. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I've been Kelly Pally, and this has been Top 10 Nerd. Catch you all in the next one.